As I was thinking about this notion of in inviting you tonight, because the trip from Hawaii to Washington is rather long, I thought it would be a good thing for you to stop in New York before you take your honors, as it were, at the Library of Congress and become officially, I suppose, the, the Poet Laureate. I wanted you to, to stop here and honor us, but I was equally perplexed by the fact that though I've interviewed a lot of people and been in conversation with a lot, a lot of people over the last 14 or 15 years that I've been doing this strange métier, I have never spoken to a poet. It's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty scary, but it also it made me reflect, how does one ask a question to, to a poet? What, is well, what question do you want to ask? Well, before, before, before asking a question, I knew it wouldn't be easy, you see. Uh, before asking a question, I would like you to read a poem. Neither my father nor my mother knew the names of the trees when I was born, where I was born. What is that, I asked, and my father and mother did not hear. They did not look where I pointed. Surfaces of furniture held the, their attention of their finger, the attention of their fingers. And across the room, they could watch walls they had forgotten, where there were no questions, no voices, and no shade. Were there trees where, the, where they were children, where I had not been then, I asked. Were there trees in those places where my father and my mother were born? And at that time, did my father and my mother see them? And when they said yes, it meant they did not remember. What were they, I asked, what were they? But both my father and my mother said they never knew. I think uh, I notice this with children often and uh, adults. Sometimes it's as though they were speaking different languages to each other. Sometimes they're, it's very intimate and you see that they are communicating. Sometimes they're talking uh, different, uh, different planes and different directions and not hearing each other. And, uh, you know, and parents very often can't answer their children's questions. And so, you know, in a sense, they don't hear the question. The noise of questions. The noise of questions. What about it? I mean, we're, we're a part of the time, we're always asking those questions. What, what, what does the word mean? That's the first question. There, there's probably a smaller audience for poetry than there's ever been in any great language. Uh, but at the same time, I'm convinced that uh, poetry is natural to everybody and that, and that children grow up with the making of poetry in them and it's this need, this need to, uh, to handle words in a way that will express the inexpressible is always with us, it's always there, the sense of inadequacy. Uh, the, the feeling that when one says thank you and really means it, it's never enough. Uh, this, uh, you know, this, this is a, a, a kind of experience that we run through in our lives all the time without realizing what it is. Uh, so when you, Paul, with your, uh, with your background, say you, you've given up poetry, I, that's why I say, I think it's ridiculous. That, that man that you're telling me about in San Diego, his life was going, going to pieces because, he, you know, he, and he met an old, an old teacher on the street uh, who, who taught him poetry in a course that he'd taken for the pleasure of it. And the man said, asked him about his life, and he said, well, I don't know, it's not going very well. And, and the man said, are you still reading poetry? And he said, no, I don't have time for it. He said, what are you talking about? It takes you a couple of minutes a day. Why don't you read one poem a day that you like for pleasure? Pleasure is very important to it. And he thought, God, it's true. My wife says I curse in the shower in the morning. And I, I start, I set out for work furious. And uh, he said, I'm going to try to read a poem before I get into the shower. And he said it changed. That really worked and made a big difference to his life. But I think anything that brings one back 
because I think that, that this is a root experience, this thing of, of expression of the inexpressible and trying to do it, and, and the pleasure that's involved in it. That's why the Puritans closed the theaters and, and, and forbade poetry in the 17th century. Uh, the joy of, and, and you know, I was at Poet's House yesterday, and they have children's programs, and the children are running around saying, talking about what fun it is to memorize poetry, and to, and to suddenly start remembering lines of poetry. Well, you know, if they come at it five years later, not having done it, they'll say, I can't mem remember, I can't memorize things, I can't do it, you know? And there, there's this resistance that's grown in. If they start early enough, they realize it's fun and that they've got something that they can carry around with them and have fun with.